uh, amazing uh, webinar that we are hosting today. Exactly. So last time we have covered decentralization, which was super interesting. And we have got a lot of questions from you guys. Hopefully this time is going to be as interactive as last time. Uh, I hope everyone, if you're watching this webinar, please let us know where you're watching from. And yeah, we are super excited to have you here today. So yeah, today, as Volkan already mentioned, is going to be about trading fundamentals. Um, so whether you are a beginner looking to explore the world of trading or an experienced trader seeking to strengthen your fundamental knowledge, um, this is super perfect for you guys. I mean, we're going to explain the basics or the basic concepts of trading and investing. Um, yeah, uh, including like how they are different, what fundamental and technical analysis are and how you're going to recognize, you know, market trends uh, and psychology effects. So Absolutely. you can see a short overview. Um, so we're going to, again, differentiate between trading and investing, fundamental technical analysis. Uh, so I will do the first two modules, pass over to Volkan, who is going to uh, discuss module three and module four. And lastly, um, we're going to cover as well the psychology impacts of the market. So let's jump right into it. So in the first module, again, we'll define what trading and investing are and how they are different from each other. So what is trading? Um, if you've been involved in financial markets, you've likely got an idea of what trading is. So the term can bring to mind hectic, you know, stock trading, uh, like you might have seen in the movies. Um, but what's the technical definition of trading? An essential part of economics, um, trading refers to the buying and selling of assets. Very basic. Whether you're purchasing uh, groceries, swapping euros for dollars, or buying any types of stocks, which represents you know, a share or equity of a company, you are making a trade. And any activity uh, where you give something to someone in return for something else is a trade as well. So imagine, just an example, you decide to buy 100 shares of uh, XYZ company at the current market price of $50 per share. The total cost, the trade would be if you buy 100, it's $5,000. So you place a, a buy order with your broker. When it comes to financial markets, um, again, we typically talk about trading financial assets, stocks, bonds, forex, uh, pairs, options, and cryptocurrencies, obviously. Um, and each trade adopts a different strategy according to, to their profile. Like, for instance, Volcan has a different risk tolerance than me, probably. Uh, and yeah, here are some common categories of risk tolerance. We have a conservative investor with low tolerance for risk, a moderate one, which is like between conservative and aggressive. Um, an aggressive um, risk tolerance would be a very, very high risk tolerance and are willing to take you know, substantial risk to pursue maximum uh, returns. There are different uh, trading styles or strategies, I would say. Uh, first of all, day trading uh, is the, uh, the most common strategy, so to say, in which a trader basically buys and sells financial assets within the same, uh, same trading day. So he's going to open and close trades within the same trading day, and they aim to basically to take advantage of short-term price movements. And often they execute, you know, multiple trades within a day. And the day trader, they focus, you know, on high liquid uh, markets and use, for instance, technical analysis, chart patterns, and intraday in indicators to identify short-term trading opportunities. Volkan is going to explain more about these terms later on. Another common um, a trading option is swing trading, in which basically trading positions, they are open for a few days or weeks. And uh, swing traders, they are taking advantage of medium term price swings or trades. So swing trading allows you know, for more flexibility than day trading and may suit traders who cannot actively monitor you know, the market throughout the day. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there are also like some other trading styles such as uh, position trading, event driven trading, but this goes beyond uh, the scope of this workshop. 
um, yeah, so let's move forward. Uh, what is investing? Um, so trading again and investing, they are commonly uh, confused concepts. Um, so what is the difference between two? Uh, when you talk about investing, uh, you hope to get a return on, on that investment, which uh, this means that you will get the money back uh, you put in plus extra. So you could, you could invest in a small business, house or financial asset with a plan to sell it later <coughs> at a profit. So um, if you invest well, you might even be able to double or triple your initial capital. Uh, while a trader also wants to make a return, they do this over a um, much shorter period. So um, you might buy this, the same cryptocurrencies as an investor. Traders, they are looking to make gains for uh, short-term and medium price changes. So how do investors and traders decide to buy and sell? So typically investors and traders, they perform analysis, you know, before risking their money, obviously. So the analysis um, frameworks, they can use, can be broken down into fundamental and technical analysis, but you will learn more about these frameworks later on. So uh, now we have a question for you guys, as usual. Um, Actually, Manwood, maybe before you <coughs> jump into the question, I would like to ask you about, so we are already towards the end uh, of our first module. Maybe just to get your insights is, uh, trading versus uh, investing, which strategy is most suitable for what type of person from your point of view? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you for this. I mean, um, I would say it depends on various factors. First, your personal financial goals, as I've mentioned before, the risk tolerance, uh, the time commitment, um, you know, to, um, observing the markets, the knowledge and uh, personality traits. Is that okay. is that good for you? Or yeah, sure. Thank you. Just uh, wanted to get a like a overall uh, just just a summary, real quick, right? What it what, what makes sense for what type of uh, personality or what to consider? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, please go ahead with the quiz. So yeah, what is the key difference between uh, investing and trading? Uh, a both investing and trading aim to get a return on investment. B, both investing and trading aim to get a return investment, but trading does it over a much shorter period. Uh, C, investing has a shorter time horizon, while trading has a longer time horizon. D, investing has a higher chance of return, while trading has a lower chance of return. So again, please put in your answers into the chat box. Um, Volkan and me, we are going to check the, the correct answer. Yep. Let's have a look. Uh, so let's give it a roughly 25, 30 seconds as we usually do. Okay. So I'm checking just the chat box, the comment box. So what do you think? Shall we reveal? Yeah. Uh, so some people say B. And it's B, exactly. So both investing and trading, they aim to get like a return on investment. But trading does it uh, over a much shorter period. All right, I think we, we can move forward. So the difference between uh, fundamental and technical analysis. So again, uh, as I've mentioned before, investors and traders, they perform analysis before risking their money. And the analysis frameworks, they can be broken down broadly into two categories, it's fundamental and technical analysis. So uh, what is fundamental analysis? So fundamental analysis basically tries to identify an asset's inherent value. So this is achieved you know, by looking at economic and financial factors in an attempt to value an asset fairly. And you may look at macroeconomic factors like 
for instance, the global economy uh, or an industry's state. And uh, microeconomic factors can also be important if you're investing in a business or an asset related to, to a business, for instance. I mean, the end goal of these fundamental analysis is to establish whether investment is undervalued or overvalued. And generally speaking, investors like me and you, they are trying uh, or they're striving for, you know, picking undervalued assets, which is also known as value investing. So you try basically to identify securities or assets that are believed to be trading below the intrinsic value, or we can we call it also true worth. So let's look at uh, let's look at an example. So imagine you you purchase a hypothetical cryptocurrency called cryptocurrency A, and you buy it for ten dollars. But your research into the project and founders suggest its real value should be twenty dollars. So you might then decide to invest more in the cryptocurrency uh, A in anticipation of uh, it realizing its true value. So you have basically a benefit or profit of ten dollars if the real inherent value is 20. Um, so when it comes to uh, cryptocurrencies, there are you know, specific fundamental analysis techniques um, you can implement. And uh, they are like on-chain metrics. Um, we, we look at raw data available on public blockchains. And these figures, they include a token or coin uh, network hash rate. You have distribution number of active addresses and other metrics. And with this combined information, an analyst uh, can create indicators to help inform their investments since these uh, metrics provide insights into the behavior and dynamics of the network participants. Um, fundamental analysis has been popularly used in stock markets, but applying these techniques uh, is relatively new in the crypto world, and there isn't a standardized comprehensive framework uh, established yet. Um, the methods, they can vary greatly, you know, from one investor to another. So um, let's jump right into now technical analysis. So um, technical analysis basically uses previous price and market data to try to predict future price movements. Um, unlike fundamental analysis, technical analysis isn't concerned uh, with an asset's underlying or intrinsic value that I've mentioned before. Instead, technical analysis, they study, you know, price actions, trading volume, uh, chart patterns, technical indicators, and other charting tools. Um, in short, so we can say that technical analysis disregards news and other fundamental factors um, and is mainly focused, you know, on market charts. So note that all technical analysis or analysts, they are traders themselves. Some, they work full-time for other uh, traders or companies due to their usefulness and risk management. Let's, we have another quiz question. Again, let me, before you start, let me directly also jump in uh, to summarize this part, maybe. Or oh, just a question for you, Mahmoud. What uh, do you take more into consideration, like you're from your personal perspective, uh, trading analysis or fundamental analysis from your investing strategy? Um, yeah, so that's also a good question. Thank you for this. Um, I'm an investor, you know, so I take more fundamental uh, fundamental analysis into account since, you know, I don't have like much time to monitor the market on a daily basis and do not have actually the, the expertise to identify, you know, the various patterns, etc. But but I can pass the question to you, like what kind of investor are, or what are you investor or trader? Uh, yeah, it's uh, I would also say uh, more on the investor side. Um, yeah, there's multiple reasons for that. But I think uh, also most of the time, as you mentioned, like it's more um, from a time perspective and also from a knowledge perspective as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I, I believe in, in long term, so for me, it's do one fundamental analysis, do some check marks, and then um, basically, uh, yeah, hodl. <laughs> that's the motto, right? So no financial right. advice, of course, but uh, yeah, that's pretty... Of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, jump right into the quiz question, I would say. 
uh, which of the following statements is our correct? Um, technical analysis is only used in a few financial markets. Um, fundamental analysis has a long history of, of established use in cryptocurrencies. Uh, combining fundamental and technical analysis will surely improve your trading results. Or is it D, combining fundamental and technical analysis can reduce risks and improve your analysis? So you can, again, use the comment box, please, and uh, let us know which answer is correct. So Check I've checked it. some people, they say B. <clears throat> so I, do you have, any do you see any comments, Volkan? Mm, I think yeah, we had a couple of these. Uh, that's it. Right. Uh, let's just uh, yeah, disclose let's it. Review. Uh, All right. Yeah. So it's actually D. <clears throat> Combining fundamental and technical analysis can reduce risks and improve your analysis. Uh, fundamental. Let's check B. Fundamental analysis has a long history of established use in cryptocurrencies. Unfortunately, not. Uh, so the most uh, people, they use technical analysis, but now it's like on a rolling basis where people, they use like a combination of both. By saying this, um, I would hand over to you, Volkan. So um, yeah, the floor is yours. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Then, so uh, let's continue with module four. Um, so in this module, we are going a little bit more into uh, um, yeah into fundamental and uh, technical analysis, um, how to utilize those actually. What Mamo just explained, how can you really um, yeah in practice uh, use those, uh, and then what is the what is the confluence uh, of those. So let's maybe right skip into exactly. Thank you. So then, uh, so when uh, to use fundamental ana uh, analysis and when to use actually technical analysis. So Mahmoud explained uh, the the basics, the fundamentals of both, and uh, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper in, into when to use each one of those. So we have now learned the uh, fundamental and technical analysis and you may, might wonder which is the best uh, use for you, right? I asked Mahmoud, um, we had a couple of points. Uh, the answer is each methodology has a different approach that can be suitable at different times. So for example, it makes sense to use fundamental analysis if you want to invest and just forget, right? Like you just invest and just forget about it over a longer period of time. And uh, technical analysis uh, requires you to regularly check, check the marks, right? You need to regularly check how is the market's uh, moving. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, required if you, uh, if you, if you use technical analysis. Uh, fundamental analysis is especially useful with uh, less volatile assets that derive uh, their value mainly from uh, business or product. So a um, very good example of this is uh, actually stocks, um, depending on the, on the market cap, of course, but usually stocks are seen as a more and more stable asset, uh, um, like compared to crypto, of course, then uh, stock of the, because of this, uh, the simple, um, like an example is Apple stock, right? The market cap is huge. So there's not so much movement going on with the stock. Uh, of course, depending on the broader economy, but in general terms, um, it's not as volatile, right? Uh, if you combine all those all these points together, you might want to use fundamental analysis to invest in stocks over a longer period of time, which is a lower risk method of investing, right? So if you invest uh, over a longer period of time, um, in, in general, you can summarize it depending on the assets, but in general, the risks are uh, like less uh, than if you invest over a shorter period of time. However, if you're looking to make gains over the short term, 
technical analysis might be more suitable uh, uh, analysis framework. And short-term uh, price movements can sometimes be more easily explained via technical analysis. Um, not always, but usually tends to be uh, that way. This is because traders make a call on whether an asset price will increase or decrease based on previous price action and technical indicators. Um, so short-term trading relies mainly on trading charts and not on the assets fundamental value. So those are like just some insights uh, when you can use uh, which type of uh, analysis. Then uh, okay, just, we'll... just have a question here, Volkan. Sure. Um, in terms of like technical analysis, what would you say is the role, you know, of support and resistance uh, levels in technical analysis? Because you always see it, you know, in the news or, um, and I think this is also a, a question that might interest here the audience. Um, yeah, so maybe you can quickly. Sure. So support and resistance. So usually, um, unfortunately, today we don't have uh, charts to explain it. Um, uh, I think we might have in the upcoming course a little bit more deep dive into it, right, Mama? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So uh, just to real quick uh, give a brief about this. Um, so basically, every time when uh, when you invest and then there's different resistance levels, right, depending on the volatility. And uh, the more an asset moves up and down, the more uh, it has um, basically support and resistance levels. So for you can imagine it, there's, let's say, a roof. And every time an has, uh, asset hits that roof from, from an analysis uh, perspective, technical analysis perspective, it hits the uh, resistance level, right? And then vice versa. If uh, the asset goes down, for example, uh, it hits uh, the support level, right? So um, it's then basically it's always those levels where an asset it's keep touching the points depending on if it's going up or if it's going down. So um, yeah, I think just to real quick summarize it, but we will go in the future a little bit more deeper into those uh, in the next model. We will go a little bit more deeper into this. All right, thank you. I just uh, want to encourage also the our users or viewers to ask questions. I'm more than happy to answer these. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, maybe we can pick up in it towards the end some of these questions. Um, let's move on to the utilizing fundamental and technical analysis. Um, so, um, yeah, how do you actually utilize those? Um, it's also important to understand that traders and invest investors don't just have to Slick, uh, stick with one type of an analysis. It's common for the two to be combined, especially among crypto traders and investors, right? If you're like, if you're a retail user, one single person, um, perhaps for you might be challenging to use both. Um, there are definitely plenty of people who are doing it, but especially when you, the, the bigger, for example, an organization uh, becomes, the more analysis, uh, um, like different type of analysis will be considered, right, in the investing strategy. So it's always good to have multiple angles um, so the, to uh, minimize your risk, right? And for example, some projects, uh, like just as an example, Ethereum regularly update their platform with improvements and new features. This adds more value to the project and can be analyzed with fundamental analysis, right? Like if you think about what's coming in six months, what coming, what's coming in 12 months, so um, then you can consider, okay, what are those check marks and then consider it in your investing strategy. Is this something good for the project? For example, if a project announces something um, or is this, uh, yeah, potentially some risks involved into it. So let's look uh, at an example. For example, let's call this person Alice has recently noticed uh, that either price has been bearish and decreasing. And so either price has been bearish, bearish and decreasing. So however, her technical analysis suggests that this might change soon to bullish trend. So Alice fundamental analysis 
regard uh, regarding the plant update also makes Alice think either demand price might increase, right? So because there's an update coming, people or the industry or the community might be excited about this. And because of that, potentially the price might increase, right? So this is uh, the, the fundamental uh, uh, part on, of this. So she decides to purchase some ether um, to profit from the expected short-term prices increase and uh, then basically sells ether when she thinks um, the, yeah, the, 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 once the news is basically um, already uh, came out there and then basically she say, thinks, okay, if the price goes up and at a peak, for example, she can uh, sell that, which is always very difficult to time. But um, yeah, this is uh, in general the fundamental analysis concept. And then combining fundamental and technical analysis can help to create even stronger analysis when trading and investing. Uh, our example above uh, shows that employing both uh, uh, can eventually create better opportunities, right? So let's uh, move to the next one. Sure. Um, Just have a question, uh, Volkan. Uh, I think it's also important to... To highlight maybe the limitations and the challenges of technical analysis. Um, okay, for technical analysis in particular, um, so technical analysis considers the charts, right? Like there is, um, so there, there, there's, for example, news. There is updates coming on. Uh, there might be things like the founder team. Um, how what's the competitive advantage of a project so there's a lot of questions that technical analysis can't answer uh, which are the, the strength of the fundamental analysis right for example if the project has a huge funding this is fundamental analysis uh, in technical analysis you can't really consider those factors technical analysis looks really into the chart and then looks how is the price movement going with support and resistance? And there are many different factors. Um, but yeah, basically you keep the chart uh, uh, and, and pay attention to the chart. So um, yeah, I would say there it's vice versa, right? The strength of fundamental analysis is the weaknesses of technical analysis and vice versa. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, this, this answers it. So all those fundamental things can't be answered from a technical analysis perspective all right perfect thank you so much sure then uh, shall we move on or another question from you or from audience um checking the comments box but for now i think it's all fine we can okay. move forward uh, cool then let's go on uh, with what is uh, confluence so you must remember that Past price performance is no guarantee for future results, right? Always uh, keep an eye on that. Just because something performed good in the past, it does not mean it will in the future also uh, happen the same. And fundamentals can't always explain price movements. So I just, uh, with this question, also uh, stretch it out. Um, yeah, not, not always... Uh, fundamentals can't uh, not always explain the price movements, right? Sometimes there's market conditions involved in it as well. These principles of combining multiple analysis methods is called confluence, allowing traders to create a single strategy with the benefits of them all. So trading opportunities presented by the combined strategies could prove more robust than ones uh, from a single strategy your trading style will multi uh, ultimately dictate the mix use and will depend on your risk profile and time available to trade. Um, so like this is, for example, I think Mahmoud and me explained, um, like it's just a personal preference. Do we have time? What is the risk tolerance? Um, so those are questions that everyone needs to uh, answer for themselves. And it's also important to understand uh, uh, market trends and cycles when you invest, of course, uh, and trade. Um, we will learn how to read market trends and cycles in the next module before we jump into the question. So this is pretty much the conclusion. Uh, of this module and then let's jump into the question 
which of the following statements is uh, or are correct? So it can be one or multiple answers. Choose that all apply. Combining fundamental and technical analysis can help create even stronger analysis when trading and investing. B, traders and investors don't just have to stick with one type of analysis. C, past price performances, uh, for price performance is guarantee of future results. D, short-term betting and price relies mainly on the asset's fundamental value. So let's give it a 30 seconds. Let's sure. drop, just the... drop your answer in the chat, right? A, B, C, D. So see a couple of A's, uh, A, B. Okay, I think... You can reveal? A, B, D, I think so. I think the first couple answers, yeah, were correct. The correct answer is A and B. So um, yeah, very good. I think there were a couple of uh, correct answers. Um, yeah, very good. Okay, uh, uh, so that concludes module three. Mm -hmm. And then we can continue, I think, with the um, next module. So let me see. Understanding uh, market trends. Okay. So um, what is a market trend uh, or what is a market and uh, module four, right? What is the market and what are the market trends, market cycles? So just going a little bit more into the broader macro perspective in this module. Um, then, so what is a market? Uh, in order to be successful in trading and investing, you need to understand financial markets, uh, market trends and cycles. So let's dive into exactly what they are. A market is simply where buyers and sellers meet to trade. Going to grocery store to buy Apple is an example of a market. The price you pay for uh, something in a market is depending on the balance of supply from from sellers and demand from buyers, right? It's always supply and demand. If the grocery store is struggling to supply apples, but consumers want to purchase lots of them, the price will increase. If there is no demand for apples, but the huge supply, the price will decrease, right? So it uh, always is in balance the uh, demand and supply. Uh, you know, for, for markets. Um, just keep that always in mind. Uh, anywhere where, uh, where supply meets demand, a market exists, right? You can uh, imagine this is one example of the grocery store, but pretty much there's markets for any type of assets or collectibles where always if you have something supply and demand and if this comes together, then you have essentially a market. Financial markets take the same concepts as your grocery store examples, but instead deal with financial assets. Supply and demand create the market and determine prices, but what exactly makes up the levels of demand and supply in the market? So the amount of assets supplied for sale in financial market has many reasons behind it. So for example, the supply of gold, can be affected by the amount mined, production costs, um, and import taxes and tariffs, among other things. So uh, actually, there's also uh, maybe just just uh, on a side note, uh, like when a lot of uh, people are uh, investing, or are the argumentation Bitcoin versus gold comparisons, right? Uh, one of the argumentations so for gold is it's actually a limited asset, right? Like there's uh, just that amount of gold here. But uh, you can also argue maybe in some asteroids, there's some gold. So if you discover it, if you have the technology someday, then the supply of gold may increase, right? 
So this is then like those are things to consider. It's just a very exceptional uh, example, but uh, just as a fun fact. So those are things to consider. So sometimes you think there's supply already is limited, but potentially the supply may increase uh, from an asset as well. So yeah, just if, uh, on the side note. So let's uh, continue with the next one. Uh, what are market trends? Uh, let's see. Okay. So there are two main types of market trends. Of course, the bullish trend and the bearish trend. A bullish trend would be a noticeable increase over a period in the market price of an asset. A bearish trend is a noticeable decrease in an asset's price over a period, right? Uh, market price can also, also move sideways, otherwise known as consolidation. In this case, there is no clear direction. So this is, for example, I think right now where we are in the market is might be a good example of consolidation phase. Um, some may say maybe we are a little bit more bearish, but um, yeah. Potentially, we are in a, in a consolidation phase, maybe. As these trends continue, we can describe a market as being bullish or bearish. If there has been a string of bullish trends in a row, we can probably say that we are in a bull market. The same goes for a period of continued bearish trends. In this case, we would assume that we are in a bear market. Right. If you, for example, if you see in the chart, um, you can see like the uh, upwards trend is actually slowly like the trend is going slowly up. So it's a bear, uh, it's a bull market, and we are if you're slowly declining, it's a bear market, and then the consolidation as well. Um, however, a bull market doesn't have to be a long, continuous, uh, and consistent rise in price. Sometimes a bull market will have some smaller bearish trends in it. The same goes for bear markets too, as they can also have some bullish trends uh, in them. In fact, we only get the full picture much later. So we can only determine markets and trends with a, a certainty in hindsight. So you never know like the chart because it's going up and down, right? You never know what is the momentum, how long will this last? So usually over a period of time, then you can say, oh, okay, at that time we were uh, in, in this, uh, uh, yeah, in a bull market, bear market or consolidation phase. Okay, um, I think this should summarize it. Then let's move on to the market cycle before we conclude this module. Uh, just a quick question, uh, Volkan, not sure if you have mentioned it already. Um, how would you describe the current market trend? Um, yeah, um, it's... so. <laughs> Personally, like, okay, I give you two answers to that. One is my personal one. Uh, I think we are right now in a consolidation phase. Um, um, some people, um, other people may say we are more on a bearish trend. So um, it's difficult to say, to be honest. Uh, I think if you're looking over the previous, let's say we are looking, for example, over the past 12 months, the chart goes down, right? But if you're looking over the past couple of months, three months, we're actually relatively in a consolidation phase. Like we will go in later modules in, in, into uh, a little bit like just support and resistance levels. Um, yeah, so it's it's uh, really difficult to guess, right? With those with those analysis. So this is this is what I mean. Like we get the full picture later on. Um, but from my point of view, I think we are more on a more towards a consolidation phase um, right at this point of time. So yeah, that's my take. What do you think? No, I mean I totally agree. I, I think I'm more like in, in bearish, you know, um, than consolidation, um, as you can see, like with inflation, etc. Um, but yeah, we, we can pass this question as well to the uh, audience, you know, to see what they think, uh, whether we are more con like in the consolidation phase or if we have here more people who are bearish. So yeah, you can put your answers in the chat box. In the meanwhile, I think you can, uh, Volkan, do the next slide, right? Market cycles. 
Absolutely. So this is actually, before we dive into the market sales, this is like right about uh, where we are right now. We could keep uh, having a dedicated module only for this, right? There's yeah, so course. many metrics to be considered. Um, but yeah, definitely let us know your opinion. And then uh, meanwhile, let's move on with the uh, next slide. So market cycles. And um, this is going to be the last uh, can we Slide exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah all right so uh, market cycles uh, so lastly you may have feared that the market moves in cycles with uh, repeating trends almost every asset will experience cycles between bullish and bearish markets um, long-term market cycles are more reliable than short-term market trends and can easily be seen uh, on graph with, with de decades of data. If you take a look at the stock market performance or crypto market over the past few years, you will easily be able to identify the larger market cycles. Shorter cycles, on the other hand, will appear as you zoom in in a small pe uh, time period. As with market trends, it's challenging to determine what stage of a cycle we are in and when a new one will be begin. Understanding the market trends and cycles is critical to be successful in trading and investing, but getting to know how market psychology impacts market trends is equally critical. So we will learn about uh, market psychology in the next module where Mahmoud will cover it. But before we do so, um, again, reminder, just drop your uh, questions into the chat. And meanwhile, let's conclude this module with a question. In a bearish market trend, the price is always increasing, mainly increasing, always decreasing mainly decreasing or moving sideways? I think this one should be relatively simple. Let's see how many people get it right. Uh, yeah, let's so. check the comments box again. Um, we have now 1,700 viewers. So Oh, even 1,900. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, do they got it right, Volkan? So yeah, so the mainly decreasing, of course, right? Like it's, uh, I, I think this one was uh, yeah, not this that. Is a pretty right? easy if one. You, if you listen very carefully, it was not that difficult, right? So, <laughs> okay. Right. Um, Mahmoud, I will pass it to you for the next one. Um, yeah, before sure. We conclude. So thank you so much, Volkan. Um, yeah, this model is about market psychology. So it's the idea that the movements of a market reflect or are influenced by basically the emotional state of us participants in the market. So this model will look into how market psychology affects the, uh, the market cycles. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about market psychology, sentiment, what's the difference, how do emotions change during market cycles and how to utilize uh, market psychology. And like other previous modules, we're going to um, conclude with a quiz. So yeah, um, market psychology is basically the idea that movements of a market reflect or are influenced by the emotional state of uh, us participants. So it's one of the uh, main topics also of behavioral economics. So an interdisciplinary field that studies um, yeah, the various factors that precede uh, economic decisions. And many believe that emotions you know, are the main driving force behind the shift of financial markets and that the overall fluctuating uh, investor sentiment is what creates the so-called psychological market cycles. On the other hand, market sentiment is the overall feeling that investors you know, and traders have regarding the price actions of, of an asset. Um, so the sentiment is made up you know, of the individual views and feelings 
of all traders and investors within the financial market. So you can also think of it as an, yeah, as an average of the overall feeling of the uh, market participants. And these um, psychological market cycles, they are driven again by the interplay between investor emotions, market trends and economic factors. They can also obviously be influenced by you know, external events, like for instance, the FTX crash, yeah, or others such as economic data releases, geopolitical events or changes in market conditions and understanding, you know, and recognizing these cycles, um, they can provide insights into market dynamics, you know, help to manage risk and form investment uh, strategies. Um, it's important also to know that psychological market cycles do not always, you know, follow this fixed pattern and market behavior, you know, can be influenced by uh, various of factors and additionally you know different asset classes and markets um, may exhibit variations you know in the duration and intensity of these cycles as you can see here uh, in the slide but uh, just as uh, within any group uh, no single opinion is completely you know dominant uh, based on on market psychology theories and asset price tends to change constantly in response to, you know, overall market sentiment, uh, which is also uh, dynamic. Uh, Mahmoud, uh, since we were talking about where we are, uh, yeah. just let's have some fun here. Um, of course, it's just, you know, your opinion. We, we don't, like, everyone needs to do your, uh, their own research. What do you think, like, when you look into that chart, since, since we have a display, what do you think where we are right now uh, from, from your point of view? Um, yeah, good, good question, Volkan. Um, well, maybe I will pass it to the audience. If you don't want to well, answer, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I can give my opinion as well. well. Uh, maybe I, I would start by saying that after, you know, the FTX follow up back in, in 2022, you know, the trust on, on, on such cryptocurrencies has been crushed, you know, um, and the market turned, you know, totally uh, as we've seen uh, in the downside range with no signs of cooling down at first. But now I see, you know, a slow growth phase um, or a slow consolidation phase, of, as you've mentioned before. So we slightly see the market recovers a bit uh, of the losses faced back in 2022, but obviously the stakes time this takes you know momentum um etc so as as you've mentioned before i think we are like more into the consolidation phase at the moment um yeah and if you ask me you know about my emotional state currently um yeah I'm, to be honest i'm a bit anxious um because we have currently you know rising inflation high interest rates uh which affects you know negatively the market obviously and if you look back, you know, the measurements of, of the central banks um, to curb inflation are not responding as anticipated. Yet access, you know, to cheap liquidity is also still inhibited. Um, so it's very, very difficult, you know, to estimate uh, the market, as you've mentioned also multiple times um, at the beginning. So, uh, you, have, you know, high uncertainty including even if you mention, you know, the Russian-Ukraine war, it's still not over. Um, so, yeah, in, in terms of my emotional state, I'm very anxious. Um, not, not, I would be interested in your opinion as well and also the opinion of the audience, what they think, uh, where we are in terms of market psychology, sentiment, etc. Um, yeah, hope this, hope this answers your question. Absolutely. Um, so I think actually, yeah, I would pretty much sign on it as well. It's a quite... Like if we compare, let's say the past 10 years, right? We were in a very bullish trend. Like it was a exceptional growth phase. And if we compare it to where we are right now, we are in a very uh, uncertain macro environment, not just in the crypto in industry, but overall from a global economic perspective. And uh, yeah, and as you mentioned with the interest rates, right? It's also very uncertain. How does the economy respond? How, um, yeah, pretty much the, the um, 
how how does the, is the inflation going down or not? So I think there's still a lot of experiments uh, going on from from central banks and from governments. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to predict, as you, as you uh, mentioned as well. So let's just pass this uh, question to the audience. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe later uh, we can dive uh, into it as well again. So I will let you continue. Sure. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. So now also a very interesting question. How do emotions, you know, change during these different market cycles? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So all markets, they go, you know, through cycles of obviously expansion and contraction where you have, you know, negative economic growth or a decline in the economic activity. So when a market is in an expansion phase or like Volkan said already, a bull market, there's a climate, you know, of optimism, belief and greed. Um, and typically these are, you know, the main emotions that lead to a strong buying activity. So you have a lot, you have a lot of uh, buying orders there. And it's quite, you know, common to see um, a sort of, uh, cyclical or retroactive uh, effect during market cycles. For example, <clears throat> the sentiment gets more positive as the prices goes up, and which then causes you know the sentiment to get even more positive and driving the market uh, even higher. And when the market starts to turn the other way, you know the euphoric mood can quickly turn into the uh, complacency. So as many traders, you know, refuse to believe that the uptrend is over and as prices, you know, to continue to decline, the market sentiment quickly moves to the negative side. And it often, you know, includes feelings like me as, as, a, as of today, anxiety, denial and some panic. Um, yeah. Um, next slide, um, how do traders and investors, they use market psychology? So assuming that the theory of market psychology is valid, um, understanding it may help, you know, a trader to enter and exit positions at more favorable times. And the general attitude of the market is counterproductive. So the moment of highest financial opportunity for a buyer usually comes when most people are hopeless um, and the market is very low. In contrast, the moment of highest financial risk often arises when the majority of the market participants are more euphoric and you know, overconfident. And thus, um, some traders and investors, they try to read the sentiment of a market, to spot, you know, the different stages of um, its psychological cycles. And ideally, they would use this information to buy when there's, you know, panic, people sell uh, when there's greed. And in practice, though, recognizing these optimal points, uh, it's not an, not an easy task, you know. So obviously, we try to, to strive for it, but um, it's very difficult to pick the right moment. Um, what might seem, for instance, like the local bottom uh, may fail, you know, to hold, leading to even lower lows. Um, I mean, as, a, as an investor or, or as a trader, you might have recognized this. Um, yeah. And um, psychology um, has an impact, you know, on markets, prices and cycles. And the psychological market um, or cycles, they are well known, but they are not always easy to read. Like from the Dutch toilet uh, mania in the 16th to the dot-com bubble you know, in the 19th, even skilled traders, they have struggled uh, to separate their own attitude from the overall market sentiment. So overall, you know, investors, they, they face a difficult task of understanding not only the market's psychology, but also their own psychology uh, and how that is affecting their decision-making process. So as of uh, the last modules, we have a quiz question for you all. So which of the following statements is our correct? Um, choose all that apply. A, market psychology is one of the main topics of behavioral economics. Uh, market sentiment is an average of the overall feeling of the market participants. C, in market psychology, no single opinion is completely dominant. 
D, it's easy for investors to understand market psychology and their own psychology. Should be also, I mean, it's more difficult than the one Volkan asked you guys, but I think it's it's quite doable. Um, so let's check Absolutely. again the comments box to see if we have um, the right answers there. And uh, meanwhile, while uh, yeah, everyone is answering the question, uh, I think we have time maybe to pick up one or two questions as well. So in case you have any questions, we can pick up one or two questions. Um, yeah, just uh, for everyone's awareness. But how is your like emotional feeling, Volkan, currently? Um, right now, emotionally, I feel very good because the summer is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I mean, like in terms of financial aspects, you know, <laughs> financial uh, perspective, uh, I think I, we, I think we are also on the on the same page uh, uh, on that regard. So, um, maybe I don't feel personally like very anxious, but I would say uh, just carefully, right? Just risk, uh, like adjusted risk tolerance where um yeah where i'm approaching it a little bit more carefully so for example if you're in uh bear markets or sidewards uh, markets then uh, potentially it may make sense to have some uh cash in your hand just in case something goes wrong just to have your own uh safety net mm -hmm. so um yeah i would say i'm more in that in that uh just a little bit more carefully approach um so yeah overall i think relatively relatively similar to you um yeah yeah i mean it's very i think exciting to see how it develops you know in the next few months you know in terms of regulations etc whether we see you know a coolness of an uprising trend you know of, of the cryptocurrencies in general um yeah absolutely there's a like, this market is just exciting overall, right? We love crypto. We are here because right. it's, a, it's an exciting market. Um, so, yeah, definitely something uh, looking forward what's, uh, what's going to happen in the future uh, in the crypto, uh, it, like in the crypto community and market and then overall, also, of course, in the overall broader economy. So, um, yeah, shall we reveal the answer? And maybe... Yes. It's um, A, B, and C. Okay. Um, uh, me, myself, I didn't check, you know, uh, in the chat box, but are we... Yeah, we... I'm just checking right now if there's one or two answers before we conclude. We could pick one or two. So if anyone has a, a, qu a question, I mean, um, feel free to drop it. Otherwise, I think we've... We are coming to the end yeah. of the course. Yeah, yeah? I think. No yeah, question. so uh, it was it was very funny, you know. Today, I mean, we we cover trading fundamentals. I think next time it's even more interesting, covering uh, trading and investing strategies. Um, we are going a little bit more advanced next time. That, right? you know. Um, yeah, but it was very nice, Volkan. Thank you so much, and also thank you for the viewers for for joining this uh, online webinar. I'm super excited to see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you, Mahmoud. It was a pleasure hosting it together with you. And see you next time. All right. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.